Hi, everybody. Welcome to Candleton Bowling. I'm Don Gillis, and I'm always speaking for the whole crew when I say we're sure glad you could join us here at the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts for three strings of Candleton Bowling and its total pinfall, which will determine our winner. Now, each of our bowlers takes home a permanent souvenir. These are provided by Din Brothers of Boston and Holyo. And uh, one of them will be our marksman of the day, and he will be rewarded with a $50 gift certificate from Rotman's Furniture of Worcester, Massachusetts. And of course, guaranteed prize money, 700 goes to the winner, 350 to the runner-up, $50 available to the winner of each string. And of course, if they tie a string, we split that at $25 apiece. Many other opportunities for a bowler to make money, and Tom Oster is very familiar with that. And so is Chuck from watching, and he's decided that he's going to pick up some too, I think. Come on up here. We'll meet Chuck Pozella, who is on the program for the first time. Welcome. And you are no stranger to Candlepin Bowling, starting from the time you can remember. Is that oh, about it? I was born. I was born on an alley. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah, your family, of course, uh, owned the bowling alley in Central Park Lanes over in East Boston. Yep. And you yourself uh, have been on television uh, with the doubles program, and also as the state doubles champion with yep. Joe Stella. Huh? First time on the same. And Joe and John have been here, so they've been getting on you a oh, bit. Yeah. They've been riding me. <laughs> and Tom did what he seems to do annually, and that is hang back uh, around the corner and then come in here and slam dunk and go right to the top of the list for our, that 446 puts your top seat again going in, huh? Well, there's no hanging back. It's just get on when you, you can. Know, it's very right? hard to get on the show. I realize that it is. No, I'm, it's I, very I don't, fortunate. I, I don't mean to imply that, that uh, you know, that, that you are so... Uh, egotistical that you would say, well, I'll wait until such and such. No, I know. Because we do not invite the bowlers on, believe me. They have to win their way on. And you have done it many, many times. Enough from me. Good luck to both of you, and we'll get underway right after this. Challenger Chuck Pozella, high single 211, high triple 465, league average 122. He has left four horsemen on the right side, plus the five and nine. Five and ten still there. A nine. Chuck is married and father of two. The youngest. Not too long ago. A single pin out of there, and uh, if some of you folks are visiting the area and seeing this for the first time, this is, that's one of the things that shows you just how difficult this type of bowling is. You literally can knock out one. And it came back, as you saw there, and you can get spares like that occasionally. He's shaking his head. That's one of the most unusual I have ever, ever seen. Getting just one pin out of there, the two pin. Then coming back. Now, Tom Osta, high single 209, high triple 504, average 136. Right down the middle. He still has two standing, the two and the four. It's a nine. Tom is married, father of two. He's employed as a salesman. This is his 65th, 65 times he's been on our program, and he's been on nine of our live championship shows. He won in 1980, 83, and 85. Two, four, seven, and ten. Nice shot for a pretty spare. Challenger Chuck Costello, East Boston. He had a 677 winning his roll off. Seven is his fill, and the three pins that are standing are the three, the seven, and the ten. Wood just to the left of the three. 
representing the Circle Bowl in Linfield as a result of his playoff. Ooh. The left-hander, I should have said that right away for the, those of you who are blind or have limited sight so you can envision it better. Twice he missed everything. Those are not real boos that you hear back there. There are a lot of folks that are here in support of him and they're more or less saying, ooh. Okay, now he has eight and nine and he made a beautiful shot. One unusual crumbling pin type of spear and one super one. All right, Tom Osta, here's the bonus ball on his spear. He's got seven as the fill and the three pins standing are the three, six, and four. Four is still there. It's a 10. Tom's a former World Candleton Bowling Congress Pro Bowler of the Year and also Massachusetts Bowling Association Open All Events Champion. Two pins to convert, the two and four, and he's got a piece of wood beside the two pin. Representing Monson Lane. He had a 686 in winning his roll off, and he has just made the spear. So, as we always do, we pause after four boxes in the first string and in the second. So each bowler has a bonus ball to roll, and in pins down, it is now Tom Osta, 46, and Chuck is 43. Working on a spear, our challenger, Chuck Pozella. All right, he gets six, and uh, it's not an easy spare leave. It is a diamond on the left side. Two, four, five, and eight. Nope, diamond wins again. I tell you, that is a tough one to convert. Looks, looks easier than it really is. the left-hander is looking at four pins and they are the one the three the nine and ten and he has wood in back of the three two pieces but he had to hit the three in order to make it go and he has left he did get the three didn't get the one the one it was one three so it's an eight Candleton Bowling Congress, the Pro Tour, is going to be starting its 22nd tour season in September with a new format and more prize money. Ladies with an average of 102 or better, men with a 112 average or better can join. Tom Posta and Tom, how many more? One more tumbles. So seven is the fill, but he has the six and ten over on the right, the seven over on the left, two pieces of wood, he'll use them. He made it. He used the configuration of the wood, which you could see was perfect for kicking over and getting the seven. Now, three marks in a row is a bonus of $50. He almost had it with one ball. He knocked down nine, so he has the seven pin for a spare. There is a piece of wood alongside it in the gutter, and that can be intimidating sometimes because the bowler does not want to let the ball touch the piece of wood. Now our challenger moves over to lane three here at the fairway. He has uh, left the two four, seven, eight. And there's some wood off to the right. He's waiting to see what's gonna to happen to it. 
one piece is over where 10 would be, another one is where five would be. And he got just one. He hit the two pin, took it out, and it was the only one he got out. It's an eight box. If you want further information about joining the World Candlepin Bowling uh, Tour, write to WCBC Post Office Box 545 Webster, Massachusetts, 01570. Tom Osta. Everything down except the kingpin, the five. Missed an opportunity for $50 in bonus money, and Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee, goes down and gets a loose ball. Each consecutive mark would have been worth $50 after establishing three in a row on the same string. Now he has the one, the seven, eight, and ten, with a couple of pieces of wood between one, well, actually, there are three between one and ten. almost pulled it off everything down except the eight pin actually made the one seven ten with help of course with the wood but that it's a ten that uh, one seven ten rather interesting it's now up to three thousand two hundred and twenty five dollars for somebody to knock down the one seven ten at the conclusion of the program Chuck Pozzella is too full on the head pin and winds up with a spread eagle leaving the 247 on the left, 3610 on the right, and no wood. Got a couple on the left side, the four and seven. It's a nine. Boy, got a thin hit on the right side. Chuck's average, as I told you, is 122, and he'll be far off that in the first, this first. He got a spare. That will help. If he can load up with this one with an eight, nine, or 10, it'll help some. He got the nine, which, and that helps a lot. All right, Tom Osta, already at 111 and two boxes to go. Our defending champion leaves the four horsemen left side. He got just one. It's a 10. One twenty-one. so he has already won the first string and wins $50 in bonus money for winning it, since he already has more than Chuck. And six are the three pins that are standing. Got that two or four beautifully, but uh, the two flew behind the six rather than right at it. So it is another 10 and a 131. And as I said, obviously has won the $50 for winning the first string by a score of 131 to 112. Defending champion Tom Olsta leading off in the middle string, as we always have the defending champion do. And that's a pretty good leadoff. He begins with a strike. Up by 19 pins, beginning the middle string. He has two strikes in a row. Wait till he comes.
comes up again. Again, for any of you folks who are seeing this for the first time, this game is so tough that we give $1,000 to anybody who can put three strikes in a row in the same string. So there'll be a lot of excitement when he comes up again. Now, Chuck Bozella of Saugus, Massachusetts, today's challenger. Chuck has four pins still standing, and he leaves two. So it's an eight. Even those of you who are seeing it for the first time, so stand by. He did not get the thousand. All right, he has left three pins, and they are the two, the seven, and ten, and would over not quite as far as the ten, but playable. Great shot, what a great shot. Now you will see that in slow motion, but actually it was slow motion itself as the, before the seven eventually went down. Now eight more is the fill on his spear. He picked up obviously another $50 in bonus money for three marks in a row. And he's looking now at the uh, five and eight. And he has it. And still another $50 in bonus money for four marks in a row. Last week he picked up $600 in bonus money. Now Chuck Zella, his first ball on his spear gets a split. Leaves him with 6-10 on the right and a little wood in front of it, and the 4-7 over on the left. Nope, we got just the 10. As usual, Al Giglio is keeping score on the electronic scoreboard, and Scott Philbrick is keeping score on the big board for the folks today. Now it's a strike. So with one bonus ball to be rolled by Tom Osa and two by Chuck Bozella, in pins down right now, it is in this second string, it is 75 for Tom Osta and 43 for Chuck Bozella. Our defending champion, Tom Osta from Sturbridge, trying to make it five in a row here in the middle string. Right, seven is the fill, but he has a split. Here's the seven, and uh, Ralph Stewart's just gone down to clear one piece of wood that was touching the dead wood line. Now he has three, and across the back he has the seven, nine, and ten. Let's see what he can do with this wood. Got it! Another $50 in bonus money. Now going for six in a row, Tom Olsta. That might hurt a bit. He got just four. His object pin is the two. He's got two, four, seven, and eight, plus the six and Got everything except, that's amazing. Got everything except the two pin. Uh, 10 brings it to 106, and now our challenger is working on a strike. Two bonus balls to fire here in the fifth box of the middle string as we come to the halfway point of the match. 
Well, that first one is not what he wanted. He has left the four horsemen right side, plus the five and nine, and he has the four and seven also. Okay, the total fill then is seven. And in the box, it will be 10. That's got to be very disappointing for our challenger Chuck Pazella as he came right down the middle and wound up with a spread eagle, punching out the one, five, eight, and nine. Did a good job wiping out the left side and also the ten pin. Still has three and six, and it's a nine as he leaves the six pin. One pin to pick up for another mark. He has left the seven pin. He has it. Another. Don Riley, of course, is our statistician and coordinator, and he'll have some more stats to put behind the name of Tom Olsta, who is perhaps the most prolific scoring candle pin bowler in years. He got a split this time. It's seven. He's left the seven pin over on the right. Uh, excuse me, on the left and on the right, he has the six and ten. There are two pieces of wood in front of the ten. Wow. He hit the piece of wood. And it is a 10. Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee, making the ruling along with, in cooperation, of course, with uh, Don Riley, who is on the left side, and Ralph is over on the right side. Okay, here is Chuck Posella again. He leaves five, the one, three, six, four, and seven. Today is Skip Peabody, Glenn Fletcher, Judy Guile, Ron Schindler, George Ellard in post-production videotape, and the man who puts it together and keeps it together is our producer, director, Phil Rubin. Five. And uh, he has the seven alone over on the left-hand side. Three, six, nine, and ten. He got those, but the seven is still there. He's got double wood in the gutter, and uh, it's this has got to be very distracting to him. You can see just a corner of the second, second one. He got it. Didn't even touch the wood in the gutter. Of course, had he touched it, he would have lost that one pin. But that was an intimidating shot, even though it was only for one pin. Now Tom Osta already at 133 in this middle string. One, two, seven, nine, and ten. Everything down except the seven pin. Piece of wood just rolled over in front of that seven and now is rolling away and he must wait till it stops. He made a 10. He 
He has a split of the 4 7, 6 10. Wood behind the 6, wood in front of the 4. And the corners are still full with the 7 and 10. It's a nine, and he finishes with a 152. Chuck Posella at 94 through eight. And it's been a disappointing day for the fine left-handed Tandleton bowler. With his league average of 122, you know that he's a good bowler, a good Candleton bowler. Now Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee, waits until he sees that a piece of wood was definitely going to come out, or had already come out be, beyond the deadwood line. Deadwood line is exactly two feet toward the bowler from the middle of the head pin. And any piece of felled wood, fallen wood, whatever you want to know, it's felled wood because it is knocked down. Uh, if it is uh, this side of it or touching it, it has to be removed. If it's behind it, it has to stay there, whether it acts as uh, an assist or a roadblock. Now he has a legitimate spare leave, the two, the four, and the seven. Once again, $50 in bonus money to Tom Olsta for winning the middle string, 152 to 122. And right now, as you can see on the right-hand side of our scoreboard, he is leading by 49 pins after two strings, 283 to 234. Today's challenger, Chuck Bosella of Saugus, Massachusetts. The left-hander fires and has rocked all three pins that are still standing, but they are going to stay standing. It's the two and the five and the seven. You could tell he missed them all. Twice. I have a very important announcement to make, and that is that the first recipient of the Stacia Zernike Boston Globe Memorial Award is going to go to Dot Petty of Portland, Maine. And Chuck comes back with a strike. By the way, that award will be presented at the 18th International Candlepin Bowling Association Hall of Fame Dinner and Induction Ceremonies to be held in Danvers, Massachusetts on Wednesday. July 28th. Four days from now. So congratulations to Dot Petty. And Stacia would be happy, I'm sure, to know that her good friend and tough competitor, Dot Petty, is the first recipient. We congratulate Doc. Tom Ulsta. Speaking of the wonderful uh, Stacia Zernike, who died much too young. She hit the high-low jack six times, and our high-low jack has not been hit since December of 1990. It's up to $3,225. All right, uh, we have a 
a triangle for Tom Osta, made up of the two, four, five. And that triangle turned out to be tricky, as they do sometimes, even to someone at his skill level. Okay, our challenger, Chuck Pozella, D-O-Z-Z-E-L-L-A. Two full, no wood to help, and uh, five on that first ball. Got three more. Got the two and the six for a ten. Nice shot, I'll tell you. Well, if that had been for a spare, you would have uh, heard some applause. Everything down except the six pin. He has a spare in the fourth. They have to be reset. A whole bunch of them fell down. Well, actually, five of them fell down. I, uh, I think they just took a look up there and saw who was coming up with the ball in his hand and decided to resign their, to their fate and drop. Two, four, six. Two pull that time on the two. with wood right between the two and the four. He made it. I want to send best wishes along to Bill Schreiber because uh, he, uh, he's just an amazing guy. He is 90 years old and bowls in seven different leagues. All right. Tom gets six as a fill on his spear, and he's looking now at the two, four, five, and seven. Ooh, didn't quite get it. Seven different leagues. Last year, he only bowled in six leagues. <laughs> and his average was 94 for all of them last year. This year, he's a little slower. He's 93.7. After all, you know, I mean, he's now 90, so. <laughs> Strike! He is an amazing guy, and uh, he visits uh, people uh, who are housebound. Just uh, a guy who wants to do so much for everybody, and he was given an award from uh, the town of Newton for that sort of thing. So we wish to congratulate him also. Tom Olsta now firing. Tom has eight, but it, he's got the two and the six. Let's watch him. No, he missed. A rare miss. And the reason it was a miss, and you see a lot of reaction, is because they know how good he is. And what he was trying to do was hit the right side of the two pin and have it bang off the sidewall and come spinning over 
to get the six pin. Then he just tried the second time by going to the six pin first. He did not get the two, so that basically justified in his mind the way he played it the first time. One, three, and eight with wood in front of the eight. left the one, eight, and ten. There are two pieces of wood in back of number one. And, oh, it didn't work. Got uh, two-thirds of it, but that ten pin's still there. So the fill was nine, and of course, obviously, he wanted to convert it, but it didn't work. Another split for the left-hander. Three, six, ten on the right, four and seven over on the left, one piece of wood in between. Didn't get the object pin, which was the three, of course, but he was going for the right side of it. Did take out the six and ten. And that's what he had hoped to do. He went to the right side of the three pin that time. Got the four and seven. Tom Olsta working on a spare. Once again, he scared those pins. They have been reset. Missed the head pin, which is very unusual. Just three. Time call by Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee, a piece of wood rolling this way. It's an eight box. You don't see too many of those on uh, Tom Ostas. A little too full, he has left the 3-6-10 over on the right, plus the 8-pin. Some wood in between the 3 and the 8. And everything went. It was a little slow, but eventually it went. Chuck Fazella. Two, four, six, and ten. One piece of wood where the five would be, and uh, it can be used. Object pin becomes two, and he didn't get it. Hit the four instead, and also picked off the ten, so he's left now with the Two pin and the six pin. He just got them for a ten box. 109. Two, four, seven, and six. Didn't get the two. A nine. 
And Chuck congratulates Tom, who needs only 117 to pick up another $100 for going over 400. He's already at 87. And he got not even a complete spread eagle, got just three. Almost came back and made a spare out of it. It's a nine. That puts him at 99, so he has to mark in order to hit 400, needing just, as I told you, a 117, but who would have expected that he would have filled with a three? All right, let's see what happens. Will he mark? Will he get his 400? Yes, maybe. Here is a strike. That brings him now to 109. Eight pins gets him an extra $100 and two shots at it. Here's the first bonus ball. And that gets him six. He needs two more. Two more for 400. Waiting for wood to settle down. Another $100 in bonus money to our defending champion, Tom Osta. So the final score is 402 to 352. 754, that's the total both bowlers combined. $150 is on our home viewer jackpot. And as you know, we will give you 10 either side when I draw the card. And if you are within that 20 digit area, you will receive the 150. But just for having your card drawn, you will get a handsome gift from the Parker Pen Company. Where are we go? Let's go away in this back corner over here and see what we can find. All right, we're going for 754, 10 either side to give away $150. And uh, this one, comes from Cambridge, Massachusetts. It's uh, Peter Bentonen. And uh, the guess is 788, so it goes up to $200 next week. Okay, Tom. High low jackpot. Up to $3,275. Okay, uh, at a boy, Chuck, sure. That, that's what we want. Stand right here. Tell me about this young lady. This is Erica, three months. Three months old. I love that cute little ribbon up there. How about that? This, this, someday, this some, someday, you're going to see this, because I know Daddy's going to get a tape of this. And uh, someday you're going to see this and say, was I really on television that young? <laughs> How about that? Uh, you're a cutie. OK, we have, of course, $350 for you. We don't have any bonus money. But it was a delight to have you. And I know you'll be back again. That's right. Bye, honey. <laughs> OK. Oh, here's a uh, Never mind. You, I'll get it for you later. The trophy from Din Brothers. All right, Thomas. You know, of course, that you hit another 400, and so you're up, what, $450 in bonus money, plus $700. And uh, you happen to know the guy who is kind of coming on to bowl. We all know him. Uh, he's been, I think he was on before you, wasn't he, sometime? Oh, he's a great one. 
I'll tell you, Charlie Jutras is the man that we are all talking about. And, of course, you have been on our program more than anybody else. But this is your 65th appearance. And look how young you are, huh? Oh, I don't know about <laughs> young. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, let's see, uh, the late Stacia Zernike was on 55 times. Uh, Paul Berger 54 times and old Charlie Jute, I almost said, oh, he'll for, forgive me, he'll never forgive me, I almost said old Charlie uh, has been on for uh, 48 times. So it should be a real good one and you know, of course, for three uh, victories in a row, you would receive a handsome chaise lounge from uh, Rotman's Furniture in Worcester. But anyway, for being our marksman of the day, you receive a $50 gift certificate, so you can take a look at the recliners when you get up there and say to yourself, maybe. Okay, $700 for winning and the uh, $450 in uh, the uh, bonus money today. And we'll see you next week. Uh, Charlie Jutras comes on. I'm looking forward to having you both here. Okay, that's it. It was nice seeing Chuck's little girl, and I hope you enjoyed the program. I'm the Don Gillis. We'll see you next week, same time.